Today, uh, I'm going to talk about model performance management um, that you know we're working on at Fiddler using explainability. Uh, just a, as a brief, you know, overview of the company. We are a startup in the Bay Area. Uh, we've been around for two and a half years. We're building this pluggable product that can uh, monitor and explain machine learning models in production today, uh, agnostic to different model types, agnostic to different data sources, and helps teams to continuously uh, manage models and you know monitor them and explain them in production. You know why are we doing what we are doing? Uh, a lot of teams are deploying AI today, right? And there are four main challenges that we see them run into. One, number one is model transparency. A lot of the models that people are deploying are highly complex machine learning and deep learning models. And these days, a lot of organizations are being held accountable uh, to disclose how these algorithms are working and, and sort of both inter from both internal people and ex external stakeholders. And so there's a lot of, you know, um, sort of emerging need around uh, creating transparency into how the models are working across organizations. Uh, the other problem, as you all know, is uh, you know models are stochastic entities and, and they drift in their performance when they're deployed. And, uh, and a lot of teams actually face these issues during the uh, you know, coronavirus, especially a lot of teams actually blogged about, you know, models losing accuracy, you know, post coronavirus and not having proper monitoring is a, is a, is a big deal. Uh, model bias. This is a huge topic of interest uh, these days across, you know, many teams and companies. As models get trained across, you know, various different, you know, types of data sets, you know, uh, bias could creep in into the models either directly or through a proxy. And then we've seen, you know, many incidents in the past where, you know, customers complained about ethnic bias, gender bias, you know, uh, uh, in terms of AI products that they're working with. Compliance is a huge topic. A lot, you know. Uh, a section of the industry, especially from financial services, healthcare needs to deal with it day in, day out. And if you have non-compliant models and uh, obviously it can be like, you know, huge litigation and and, and so and, and sort of uh, fines can be levied upon. Uh, the, the fundamental problem behind all of this, as you know, is uh, machine learning models are error prone, right? So they, you know, as you know, like, uh, as they, when you deploy those models, they can lose performance over time. Um, you can have, uh, you know, Accuracy, accuracy, accuracy dips because of you know change in user behavior, change in you know uh, the way the data is actually being processed by the models. Data drift is one of the primary reasons for that. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about it these days. You know, you train a model uh, and you deploy it, and the data distribution shifts between production and training, and you see that that is affecting the predictive power of the model sometimes. Data integrity, the data quality of the inputs that the model receives is a, is a huge is a problem in terms of you know, hurting model performance. Um, we see a lot of times that model performance actually uh, is determined by the quality of inputs that the model is receiving. You know, you're receiving like null values, you know, missing features or things that are you know, in a garbage manner, then the models are not necessarily going to process them in a way that you expect. Bias, we talked about it, you know, transparency. A lot of these models today we work with, you know, highly complex models, you know, new deep neural networks, hybrid models, you know, a mix of, you know, multi-model uh, inputs like, you know, text and tabular inputs that, that, that models are processing and they're very difficult to debug and understand what's going on. So the, the, the interesting thing is despite all these problems, all of you probably who joined this conference and everyone out there, are still deploying and going ahead and deploying those models, right? And 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 that sort of puts these teams at you know two big risks, right? One is not having proper monitoring into how the model performance is doing over you know week over week, day over day, and then not having the right tools to troubleshoot you know models when you run into performance issues, and that's that's basically what uh, we're trying to build at Fiddler. You can think about Fiddler as like uh, a data dog or a tableau for machine learning and AI. It's a visual analytics tool that captures all of your model performance data, helps you provide you know, visibility across those models, help you, helps you track bias, helps you set up alerts so that when you things go wrong, you can actually go and come and check the dashboards and, and explain you know, how the model is performing, diagnose the model performance. It's built for the data scientists, built for machine learning engineers, and, and, and it's, a, it's a pluggable module within your machine learning workflow. The way you can attach Fiddler today is you can have your traditional machine learning uh, platform that is that you're using to train your models and that you're using to serve your models. There are many machine learning platforms out there, uh, SageMaker and other custom machine learning platforms that teams roll out. Uh, literally, you know, some of our customers are able to plug Fiddler 
uh, as a sidecar to their models so that they can continuously monitor, analyze, and validate these models during this process. And this helps basically close the loop uh, in, in terms of uh, for their machine learning workflow and, and illuminate like this model black box, right? So by being able to validate the models uh, after training and being able to monitor them during production and being able to analyze the model performance uh, using explainability is what we are trying to offer here. The vision for us is to take this MPM system and bake it uh, as a centralized uh, component throughout the ML lifecycle so that teams can use it throughout the ML lifecycle and benefit from it. For example, some of our customers use the system to track bias in their training sets and track feature quality, uh, validate models and generate model performance reports, explain them you know, after they're trained. This is obviously very important in a regulated industry. Compare model performance across pre-production and post-production models. Observe the model performance over a period of time. Set up alerts on you know different conditions, and then analyze you know false positives or other things that might emerge you know as models run, start running in production. The goal is the holy grail for us is to be able to close this feedback loop so that when you are analyzing model performance issues, let's say you find a region of you know uh, data points where the model is not performing well use explainability to understand more and therefore and, and close the feedback loop so that you can either generate better training data sets or you know better model architectures to fix those issues and that's that's the, that's the vision that we are working towards uh, the goal for the mpm is to reduce these operational risks that i talked about right performance degradation risks you know bias risks data quality risks that could hurt model performance and actually you know hurt your business metrics and hurt your customer trust in the future uh, we have uh, several customers across various different industries, financial services, e-commerce, ad tech, that are using the platform today as a centralized model monitoring and a validation system. Uh, across the board, uh, you know, different types of models, you know, search and recommendation models, anti-fraud models, promotion type models, uh, uh, you know, uh, lending and, and fraud detection models. The experience is, is built such that it it can serve not only the data science teams, but also you know, related teams like the product teams that work with the data scientists. Oftentimes, a lot of product teams ask a question like, hey, you know, I'm getting this prediction or I'm seeing this model performance issue. Why is this happening? And a lot of times data scientists don't have ready-made answers. And, 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 and when things do go wrong, when customers complain about ML-based products, uh, you know, it is like a scramble that that sort of you know data scientists will go through to reproduce the issues, right? So Fiddler makes it easy because you can actually collecting all of the model production logs in one place, so you can go back in time and reproduce the issue and understand why a model performance has affected a single data point or a group of data points, and then root cause analysis, root cause uh, the behavior there. And the goal is to serve um, not just the data scientists but also the stakeholders that they are working with, so that they can consume these insights. And, and sort of democratize the understandability of models across the organization. That's basically it. You know, we are here to help companies, you know, transform their AI into a trusted platform so that they can, you know, build lots and lots of more models and deploy them into production in a safe and responsible manner. And then, you know, and do, do, do it right for their, you know, business as well as for their end users. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Uh, you can also reach out to me at krishna at fiddler.ai or we have a general you know, email address info at fiddler.ai. You know, you know, happy to talk more.